couple of weeks ago with extensive knowledge about business relations among NFL owners. And I was told that there is a way the dominoes fall in the St. Louis relocation litigation against the NFL and the Rams that would result in the NFL offering an expansion team to St. Louis. And I said, well, how can that be? Stan Kroenke has agreed to indemnify his partners. That's a fancy lawyer term for he's got their back financially. Whatever the bill is for the legal fees, for the settlement, for the verdict, if there is one, Stan Kroenke is writing the check. That was part of the agreement that allowed him to move from St. Louis to Los Angeles. And it's a simple position for the other 31 owners. Like, hey, look, if this thing goes sideways, it's on you, not us. You get sued over this. We get sued over this. You foot the bill. Okay, fine. Sign off. Indemnity agreement. If he reneges on that and the NFL finds itself on the wrong side of a major verdict, which would become officially a judgment if it's upheld on appeal and whatever, and it'll drag it out for years, that's when the NFL may say, how about a team? How about something that doesn't cost us X billion dollars? You just want a team? We'll give you a team. So that's that's out there. And it's, I think, a little more in focus because, as you saw on the graphic we had at the opening of the segment, Stan Kroenke has begun the process of backing away from his indemnity agreement. He was asked to leave the room yesterday so they could talk about him behind his back about what they're going to do about his intention to try to challenge the indemnity agreement. That's where it gets juicy, Miles, because a lot of the owners are pissed off, including John Mara, the shadow commissioner, as they call him from time to time, co-owner of the Giants. He said, hey, I never would have agreed to let this guy move. If he was going to try to pull the rug out from under us on this indemnity thing. So this is huge. A group that is usually on the same page about everything. They got one guy breaking ranks on the WFT investigation. And now they got the guy whose team has created this major potential liability. Who's saying, "Eh, you know what? Maybe I won't honor my agreement after all. This is getting good. Yeah, it is. And I think the reporting out of that was very interesting. I mean, the the one thing that like really stood out to me was in that piece was that, you know, Kroenke has offered to settle this uh, this lawsuit, right? He's, this thing that's gone on from St. Louis. And he's offered as much money than is more than some of the owner's net worth. Right. And so Gronky is one of the richest owners in the league. That's why he was able to purchase the land at Hollywood Park. That's why he was able really to move the Los Angeles Rams to back to Los Angeles and do all the things that they've done. And it's it's interesting just to see now because, like, look, the stadium's built, right? I mean, we see it now. It's SoFi Stadium. Everybody that comes in there says how beautiful it is. You've got a new NFL West Coast headquarters that houses the NFL network basically right across the street there from the stadium. So all this now is done, and it's why Kroenke was able to do it in the first place is because of all these different agreements that he made, including the one to indemnify the league back before this thing got, got settled and um, they were, the Rams were able to finally move back to Los Angeles on January 12th, 2016. And so I guess like from my old perspective on this, like that move changed my life because I was still working for the organization when it happened. I moved from St. Louis to Los Angeles and basically it's become my home and now I'm here today. So it's, it's a weird sort of thing to see the way that this has now turned out. And now all of these different things are becoming more public about the process of how this happened. And so it seems like St. Louis has got a really kind of a decent case here. And they are at this point refusing to settle. And yeah, that's why you're now seeing owners start to kind of break ranks from each other. And if this is going to be a fight between owners, that's going to be very, very interesting because you got to fight between billionaires, man. That's, That's some interesting stuff. St. Louis, as I've said before, has the tiger by the tail, and it is pulling as hard as it can. And you alluded to this passage from Seth Wickersham's report about what went down yesterday. I've not written about it yet at PFT because it deserves its own, in my mind. Look, and I'm not going to question the editorial decisions at ESPN.com, why they would do one long story with different things that I think would separately draw attention. But the idea... And this is from the Seth Wickersham item at ESPN.com that Jerry Jones, who is on board with Kroenke, who has been one of the champions of Kroenke's move because Jones owns Legends Hospitality and they've made a boatload of money off of SoFi Stadium, not to mention other reasons why he's supporting Kroenke, but he's on board with Kroenke. 
Jones and Jeff Pash, the NFL general counsel, had a brief back and forth. Then Jones asked Pash whether Kroenke had tried to settle the lawsuit. An odd question because wouldn't Jones know that? Pash yeah. said, Pash said that he had and that Jones said Kroenke's settlement figure was in the billions with a B of dollars. His figure is in the billions. Pash refused to confirm it. A source with direct knowledge of the situation told ESPN that it was less than a billion, but those in the meeting said that it was more than the net worth of some in the room, that that's what they were told by Pash. Now, now, I don't know who in that room is singing like a canary to Seth Wickersham, but man, that's a leak that they better plug. And I'm in favor of information coming out. But, Miles, when you're talking about high-stakes litigation with these folks in St. Louis who already have you on the run, when this kind of stuff comes out there, it's going to embolden their position. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once the rulings came down back in July where you had to have owners give up financial information because they may be found responsible for punitive damages, when the effort to throw the case out is rejected and we're going to trial, that's when the price starts going up and up and up. And this insight into what Stan Kroenke is willing to do if he's willing to go in the billions, wherever St. Louis currently is, it's like the negotiation between Bernie Mac and Billy Bob Thornton and Bad Santa. Half. And no matter what they offer, you just keep sticking to your guns. Half. Because you're eventually going to get everything based upon that passage. I, I can't believe that got out. And, boy, they're going to have a hard time putting that toothpaste back in the tube when it's time for the lawyers to negotiate again. It is uh, something that's going to be difficult to put back in the toothpaste holder, as our friend Shireen Williams might say. Hang, hang on. I, oh, 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 a gratuitous shot at Shireen. I can't say I don't like that. Um, have you seen Bad Santa? No. Our, why did that, that was at least one that came out when you were right in the target demographic to think it was awesome. I'm sure I would All think right. it's awesome, but have I seen it? No. No, it no. is. I figured you were going to awesome. ask me that too. Oh, Miles, I, I'm telling you, it's one of my favorite movies. Every Christmas season, forget the classics, forget It's a Wonderful Life, forget a Christmas story. Bad Santa. That's the event that we have down in the barn to watch Bad Santa every year. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.